Oh, right. Oops. Well, I guess the barracks wouldn't be a bad stop. We can see if anybody's got to, if anybody's got the points to upgrade. Not quite yet. Yes, Commander. Uh, we're not quite there on that. Oh, uh, let me do that again then. Let's see. Carrick is ready for the next level of gunnery. Outstanding. Devious is almost there on the last set of tactics. Almost there. Uh, we'll save up for Game Master and their next level of guts. Ready for the next level of gunnery for Gravel Line. Outstanding. Receiving you. Uh, we'll go ahead and pump more tactics on the commander. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? Ah, uh, you missed our first successful mission, Sierra. We went up against some clanners in a very light and easy mission, but we did win. And we won with little in the way of casualties, so... It's good to bounce back. Uh, I don't think we got the cougar parts, us, so... Um, we did not pick it, but I don't think that we got it in the random either. Uh, let's see. Kairos is our pilot. So I'm thinking, obviously, piloting is going to be the way to go. Um, and I think we have to go with side slip because that's the only vehicle skill. Which doesn't really matter for a VTOL, so does that even really matter? Sure, movement only applies to mechs, though, doesn't it? Well, you know what? Karos might be in a mech sometime down the road. So yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. I don't intend to keep you locked in a vehicle forever. It did you. Training confirmed, Commander. Ah, uh, let's see. Quagmire, not quite there yet. Rex is ready for the next level in piloting. Sierra, not quite there on tactics. Sparrow is finally out of med bay, you guys. Finally. It's amazing. The dude was laid up for over a year. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. All right, Erst. Piloting her guts. What are you specializing in? Guts, all right. So we got Juggernaut and we got Brawler. I assume you're going to want to go with Brawler, but I'll ask. Juggernaut, okay. So it was. Training confirmed, Commander. And then Wolf, not quite there yet, but that's all right. Next up, we'll head to the mech bay, and we've got ourselves a griffin that we need to repair. I th think it only lost a couple of actuators. Oh, heat sinks. Yeah, not a big deal. That's ah, okay. Thankfully, heat sinks are free, so we can just cram a couple more in there. Yeah, I keep saying I want a melee mech. We just, like, we haven't found what we need to do that. We haven't found any freaking melee weapon so far. And it's actually kind of frustrating. Uh, let's see... Engineering upgrade in 11 days. Financial report in 12 days. Um, we should have the ability to run... Yeah, I was about to say. Alright, so there we go. We want one day. See, we spent the last two streams in Solaris off Salt, and we did not find a single melee weapon. Not only in the shop, but also in the multiple missions that we ran on Solaris, not a single melee weapon. Drove me insane. Um, but yeah, let's hit the command center. Next thing up, 
I know we could do Maginot, which it's in the desert, but at least the heat dissipation isn't going to be as bad. Um, let's see. I don't really want to capture or destroy a base. So we either go with the assassinate or we go with the battle. What are you thinking, Chad? Battle looks like it's going to be a little more challenging. But also has a potential for better salvage. Yeah, well, uh, that, that may be the case. That may be the case. I don't remember either. Like, I'm remembering in Rogue Tech how the melee weapons are like equipment. They're critical slots, but they can be moved. But I don't actually remember how it works in BTA. It's been a long time since I had a melee mech in BTA. The battle is going to be mostly turrets. Why is it going to be mostly turrets? Well, it doesn't matter. Well, we'll do this one first. And as long as we don't take any serious damage, we should be able to take the assassination right after. We'll see how it plays out. Um, unfortunately, did I not? I didn't actually set the battle armor to be repaired, did I? I'm sitting here wondering why we still don't have the battle armor, and it's because I never actually went in to repair it. So let's, let's fix that first, shall we? That's gonna take one day. I'm actually okay with that. Alright, now, let's try that again, and this time we'll actually be able to take the battle armor. Alright. So same mechs, we'll put the Dakota in, we'll get Karos in the pilot seat. Battle armor as usual, with Bigfoot running the show. And, uh, yeah, I think that's the best we're gonna be able to do with what we got, so let's hit it. Oh, god damn it. Yep, I went too fast. I was in such a hurry. Good thinking, Ossal, but it's, uh... Yeah, that, that's my fault. My bad. That's alright. We already learned the lesson last time we took the battle armor in to not just immediately charge in and drop them off. What is it that you're driving? Uh, I believe you are running our missile boat, which at this point is a dervish. It was the Treb, I think it's the dervish now. I believe. Alright, as is tradition, let's see what Sage Wisdom Darius has for us. He says, we've faced fixed emplacements many times, Commander, but in this case, they may not be obviously clustered around a base. If they have good lines of fire, it could get interesting, but nothing we can't handle. With that being said, we do have multiple artillery pieces, and those will be very, very effective against turrets. So as long as we can get line of sight on them, I don't see turrets being a huge problem. I'm more worried about whatever mechs they're going to bring to the field. So we will see. We will see. Thankfully, Darius is, as usual, jinxing the mission right from the beginning. You know, he's he's kind of got that that air about him where he has to say the perfect death flag for people when we start the mission. Okay, no modifiers. Outstanding. I think we've gotten this map before. Uh, so all of the turrets are in this direction, I guess. Destroy weapon emplacement. Well, let's check it out. First things first, I'm the realist. Standing by. Why are you so far away? That's... Ugh. Alright. Well, we're in the free move portion of the mission. So I'll go ahead and move the VTOL first, and then we'll mount the battle armor. Ah. 
and then we'll start to move up. Where I guess we'll hit the ridge line first, see what we can see, and then plan our next move from there. Roger that. Yeah, that's 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 the story. We'll say they fell out of the dropship. Uh, excuse me. I'll try that again. Ah, the Jaeger. God, the Jaeger mech is slow. I always forget how slow it is. Ah, let's see, we'll move up the Griffin, and then we got our Rommels, which are pretty fast, but we'll just go ahead and start moving down that way anyway with the Rommels, because we know we're going to have to get stuck in. Um, I think Carrick and the Ballista can just stay right where they are. We got good elevation, and we know the weapon system will have effectively unlimited range. So if we need to move up, we can, but I think we're good where we are. In the meantime, oh God, I was sleeping. let us want? conservatively move forward. And there we go. We got some mechs. And it looks like all we can see for the time being. Uh, but we do, again, have a height advantage. We'll definitely use that. Um, Braden in Texas, I mean, if you notice, I'm not wearing the jacket today because in the area of Texas that I'm in, it was almost 85 degrees today. It is, it is currently the second week of November and it is 85 degrees outside. Because Texas is just the best. I've said this before, but Texas has two seasons, hot and not quite as hot. Uh, let's see. We'll move up, Dervish. You're not letting us sensor lock because we've only been in contact for this first turn. Uh, Bolo, I think we're going to follow you back behind these rocks. You have indirect fire, so I'm not real worried about that. The Disco Inferno, I think first thing we do is immediately start sprinting. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. And you're not going to let me censor lock. I don't even know why I keep trying to do it. Oh no, this is... Is this our first tongue ton? No, it's not. Stop it. Stop it, battle tank. On my way. I got you. Alright, uh, I think rather than do what I was going to do and move the Rommels forward, I think we'll just go ahead and take some elevated positions here and let the Gauss Rifles do their work. On the move. Because we can already see five mechs, so we're going to have plenty to shoot at. Confirmed. Holding and cooling. Yeah, I know, that's a big-ass laser. Too bad they got it pointed in the wrong direction. Alright, what do we got? Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and reserve the battle armor. Because we know we're not gonna get in contact with the enemy just yet. Commander? Oh, well, I don't think you're gonna be in sensor range just yet, so we will reserve come you. Of our friend or traitor, come. I kinda wanna move Erst up to try and get a visual, but I don't know what we're up against, and he could absolutely get mobbed. Well, we'll keep him in the ambush position, and we'll wait to see what happens. Alright, let's see. We got an Arctic Cheetah to start off with. Packing every frickin' laser in existence, apparently. Although I guess I shouldn't be surprised by a clanner with a laser boat. Um, 
Bolo again. Do we have anybody else that can go first? Karos. Karos. Against my better judgment, we could fly out here into the middle, and that would give us good visibility, and then immediately try to get them out of here. And you're probably wondering why I did that, and the answer is, we have artillery and I want to know what we're up against. So two kit foxes, two arctic cheetahs, and a cougar. All light mechs, but still plenty dangerous because they're... they're clan. So yeah, uh, depending on who moves next, hopefully it'll let Bolo go next. It is not. So who's going to move next? We'll still get at least three of them grouped up, though. Um, they're doing stuff and I don't like it. <laughs> God damn it, Tex. Alright, Bolo, here we go. Time to, as you so eloquently put it, drop the rock. But we don't have a long time, but we do have an arrow four, which is pretty damn close. Ten four. And there you go. Oh, one of them is, is also mounting some battle armor, so glad I slung that when I did. What's up, boss? And the very next shot is going to come from Carrick, who's on the elevated position. Well, thankfully, I think uh, I think our VTOL is actually in a place where they... Well, now they can still get there, but... I plan to get the VTOL out of there. I just wanted to move up so that we could... Knowing that they were all grouped up like this, I wanted to try to get... As many artillery shots on them in a group as we could before they had a chance to split up. So there we go. We've breached the armor and we've destroyed... At least one of the battle armor, maybe the whole unit. So we will see. Yeah, they would normally be okay with high evasion. The only problem is they've used two sensor locks on the veto already. So I definitely want to avoid any further potential mishaps. Uh, let's see, Griffin, 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 Griffin. Heading out. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to take the side shot and hopefully get a kill or at least some damage on this Kit Fox because they're packing battle armor and I want to try and put this, put a stop to them. Or at least damage the battle armor. We did not get many hits, so that is unfortunate. Well, that hurt a little bit. Oh god, uh, they're shooting me and I'm really scared. For real this time. Uh, yes, Commander. Again, fucking... Yeah. Tex did fine work. Tex did fine work with that character. Acknowledged. Alright, the baby back. Uh, I think we take the same shot. Let's see. Who, who, who do we have the best accuracy on? We got a, we got sex number on him. I mean, sex number is tempting, but I do want to stop those elementals. But I think we gotta go with sex number, though, don't we? I mean, like, Like, it's a requirement, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we go with sex number. His heat's already high. Nice, and we got both hits, so that's going to keep him nice and toasty. And yeah, there you go. Sex number did not let us down. We hit both shots. Couldn't have asked for a better outcome. Would you guys please... Oh, god damn it.
Well, that's unfortunate. Ah, Karo survived. The battle armor hasn't been hit yet. But, uh, it ain't gonna be long. Commander? Again, that was... unfortunate. That's okay, because revenge is a dish best served piping fucking hot boys. If you think I'm gonna take that shit lying down. Equal chances? Fuck it, we're shooting at the one with the battle armor. Let him burn. You love to see it. And we got a head hit. Why? 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 Now what the hell is that even? Just some random vehicle with AC2s off on a hill somewhere? Man. Miss the bullshit Olympics on this mission, I'm telling you what. Yeah, I, I love missiles, Mir. I really do. Like, anything that shoots a lot of stuff. That's why I like the MRMs. Because there's no other weapon system in the game where you can just launch 120 missiles with only three weapon systems. Uh, Jaeger... Uh, yeah, we're... We're, we're gonna, we're gonna have these guys have a bad time. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna go with a DACA. So, yeah. Grab a lion. Let's give him the business. I'm on him. Oh, you love to see it. You love to see it. Outstanding work, grab a lion. Outstanding work. Destroyed some weapon systems, but we took a mech off the field, and that's what matters. Yeah, well, that Kid Fox just took two Gauss rifle shots in a row. So the fact that he didn't immediately burst into flames, I think, is a testament. Uh, but that's okay, because we're not done yet. We got two more Gauss rifles in the form of, uh, our Rommels. And there goes the leg on that Kit Fox, so he's taking a dirt nap, and that should take the elementals off of him, I believe. Because that still counts, even if it's a friendly. And then guess what? Quagmire's also in a Rommel. And, uh, yeah. And there you go. That's why I love Gauss Rifles, because even clanners have to respect the boom tube. Fuck you and your cheat codes, clanners. Alright. Now. Revenge has been served. I think it's about time we started getting stuck in. So, I think we will run Rex over in this direction. I am moving in. It's going to take us a couple of turns before we actually get in close enough, but that's okay. Yes, Commander. Believe it or not, the battle armor is still okay, and we're close enough to mount the Arctic Cheetah, and that is exactly what we're going to do. 85% chance it looks like we succeeded. Good shit. I love it. Give me some more of it, please. That one was a bad one right there. It was not a bad one. It's fine. It's fine. Bolo. Bolo. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. Who do we got the best chat on? It's gonna be this guy? Thirty-two percent chance? Yeah, well, if we whiff it, hopefully it goes in the direction away from Erst. Targeting for an alpha strike. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. 
Oh, don't worry, Erst. You, you are going to be ripping and tearing here very shortly. Excuse me? I'm, I'm wounded. Again, just, just like, this is the bullshit Olympics right now. Come, Nerevar. Friend or traitor, come. All right, who's getting the business? Arctic Cheetah or Cougar? Um, I mean, I guess the question is, who can we actually reach? Oh, it's a charge on both. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, I think instead is we will run up here. And we will give them the traditional uh, ritual of the full alpha right up Main Street. All will be decided here and I shall prevail. Oh, yes. Urs. Farewell, sweet Nerevar. Outstanding job. Outstanding job. Yeah, the... It, it only has one evasion. The problem is that uh, Erst was not really in a position to do much about that. But don't worry. We, we will absolutely exploit that. Also, these guys are apparently going for headshots? All right. None of those shots made it far enough, I guess. Order. Well, my friend, you have made a grave error in judgment because not only are you overheating, but you're in melee range of the baby bag, and uh, you will regret that, I'm afraid. Aye, aye. And there goes a leg. So let's see, are you going to crit on the fall? Uh, no. No, he is still alive. Somehow. Yes, Commander. You know what? Good on you, buddy. Good on you. Affirmative. But yeah, unfortunately, we're, we're going to have to... We're going to have to share some love with our friend here. Because he's, he, he's picking on our battle armor. And that's, unfortunately, just not an acceptable proposition for me. My flamer is empty. And that's, that's what I love about the missile boats. Is when you put the rocket launchers on them, you always get a bunch of hits. Especially with our characters who are all fairly high level. So we're going to intensify firepower. And, uh, well, I was hoping that we could... Yeah, that's probably not a great idea. I think I just wasted that. Eh. I probably should have paid attention before I did it. But let's see. Maybe... No, we can't shoot at the ground. Damn it. This is why it's the cult of bad tactical decisions, chat. Because I do things too fast. And then I waste stuff. Hunkering down. All right, Devious, you took a headshot. And we've also got some torso damage right off the bat. So this is, uh, already... These guys are not... They're not making any friends. But we'll go ahead and we will fire at this Arctic Cheetah, see if we can take it off the field, or at least do some damage. So here goes the right arm. He's still standing, though. He's still standing. You are correct, Sierra. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making very bad decisions at very high speeds. When it comes to bad decisions, my APM is unmatched. Uh, I think it's time to give him the goss, and I think he's going to have a bad time. But you know what? It's an Ultra AC. Let's give him both barrels. Yep. Yep. He's having a bad time. Yes, Commander. Listen, I know what you meant, Devious, but whenever I see semi, the only thing I can think of is semi chub, which is a joke between me and some of my friends. Standing by. And I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but it, it has some significance to me. 
I think we'll leave G uh, Quagmire behind, and we're just gonna take a called shot on the torso. Oh, and there goes that mech. So, that leaves no more enemy units, we just need to take out the turrets. No, I told you guys, I they they shut down Grandpa Tex. Karos got shot down. Um Copy that. I'm out for blood. Vengeance will be mine. That is simply an unacceptable state of affairs, and I will not stand for it. Uh, I think we'll move the battle armor up, but keep them out of line of sight so that we can use them to scout. Since they're not going to do much with uh, no mechs on the field. And hopefully they don't have any indirect fire on those turrets. Come, Nerevar. Friend or traitor, come. Uh, of course, Erst, you're going to have what extremely high mobility. Innocence. So you will probably make contact with the enemy long before the rest of our team is anywhere close. Reading you. And unfortunately, Bolo, you're not going to be able to do much from where you are, but what we can do is jump you up to a higher elevation. So that when we do reveal those turrets, you'll have a little bit better accuracy when it comes time to shoot at them. I don't think... Yeah, you're not in sensor range, so we can't get the sensor lock on them just yet. Yeah, this is true, Typhoon. I mean, we, we are up against Jade Falcon, so we gotta be careful. By the way, good to see you. If you just got here. I feel like I haven't seen you in chat yet. So hopefully you're having a good Tuesday, as always. Thankfully go. the dervish is pretty speedy. Um, do we have... Oh, we can sensor lock this first turret. I've got a sensor lock. Light sniper turret. Is that our... is that our auto cannons? That is indeed our auto cannons. Okay. All right. Good to know. I mean, I can neither confirm nor deny the stories about Tex and his prowess in the trials of the bedroom. But it is said, by. it is said that he puts all of his peers to shame. Taking the shot. And that's why I love artillery, because one we just turret. one time to turret. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, here I know you were a little later to the stream, but Tex did pop in for just the briefest of moments. He was in chat for, uh, I don't know, all of two minutes uh, before he, he headed out, but he still stopped in to say hi. Alright, Sarah. Good to see you again, as always. Thanks for stopping by. Glad you could make it for the stream. Reporting. And we hope to see you next time. I don't know why I'm like I'm moving everybody up. There's only one turret. We're we're like as soon as we get a sensor lock on this turret, I'm just gonna drop artillery on it again. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Typhoon. Um, I mean it it's it's never easy when people in your life pass on, but uh uh, I'm a firm believer in, you know, living your life the way that they would have approved of. And, you know, if you do a good job and you live your life right, you'll get to see him again. So, you know, death isn't the end. It's just the start of another journey. And besides that, you know, 
when when you lose somebody and it hurts like that, I mean, that's important because when it hurts, that means that that person meant something. It means that their life meant something. It means that they had value to you. So, you know, it's... You, you can see that as a bad thing because they're gone, but you can see it as a good thing because they left a mark on their world. And not everybody can say that. Talk to me. Let's see. Who, who is going to get there first, though? That's the real question. Who is going to be the one that gets into range of this turret so that we can arrow for the damn thing first? Oh, no, wait, there's another turret back there. All right, so there's two turrets. I stand corrected. Yes, Commander. Uh, I think we will go ahead and reserve Bolo so that they'll be ready when we do finally make contact. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. Erst, you might be able to get visual on these guys. I apologize in advance for what potentially using you as a sacrificial lamb. Oh, oh, okay. We've got even more out here. So we got a turret, we got another turret, and we got a... Uh, what is this? Oh, really? What? Oh, it's a turret, but it's in the ground, I guess? Okay. Yeah, and like I said before, that's that's what I try to do with the stream, is I, I try to make this a place where everybody can at least relax and have a good time. So hopefully, hopefully I'm accomplishing that objective. Reading you. Uh, let's see. I think, I think, which, does it really matter? I don't think it matters. I do kind of want to hit the one that's in the ground, though, because it being in the ground concerns me. So I'll go ahead and shoot at that one first. And we did not get the kill. That is intense. But it's an LBX sniper turret, so, uh... Ready for orders. Well, the thing about Urs, though, and, and I know what you're talking about with the Capellans, like, you get voluntold. But the thing about the Capellans is, um, you kind of already know that when you go into the armed forces. And there we go. So that leaves two turrets left. Um, but you kind of already know that going in, and it's expected. I'm sorry? What? Roger that. I mean, I'm not saying it's okay. It's like, you know, when you join the Soviet military, and you know that you're going to get shot in the back if you try to retreat. Like, it doesn't make it better, but at least you know. And General Quarters, thank you for the 500 bits. I do appreciate it, as always. It's time for the General Quarters 2C. It, it, you know what? All right, we, we can probably make that happen. We can probably make that happen. But let's get through this mission first. Uh, Carrick. Unfortunately, it's not actually letting me target this turret. Like, I want to click on the turret, but I cannot click on the turret because it's in the ground. And I can't, like, glitch the camera into the ground. I'm trying to find a way to glitch the, the camera just right so that I can get something on it. There we go. Okay. Take the shot. And we got the kill. Outstanding. Uh, also, if you have enough channel points down at the bottom, look on the bottom left of the chat box and you'll see the dopamine hits button. And then if you have at least 5,000 channel points, which you should with as much as you've watched the channel, uh, you can spend, I believe it's 5,000 points to be in the game. Commander. Alright, Devious is up. Even with a headshot, I think you'll be okay. Unfortunately, we do not currently have visual, so you won't be able to do much. 
Um, I don't think... Yeah, you're not in range to sensor lock either. That is unfortunate. Wow. Uh, apparently, you got Erst feeling a certain kind of way. So we, we have learned an important lesson today, that you do not make comparisons between Erst and, uh, and anybody in House Curita, apparently. So just, you know, jot that down for future reference. Let's see, Quagmire, you're not going to be yeah. able to do much. You're so far back. And we got Typhoon gifted a sub to X-Man. Thank you, Typhoon. Again, as always, appreciate it. Pan forward that gift sub that you got from Sierra. You guys don't have to do that. I always say it. You don't have to, but I absolutely appreciate it. You. Thank you for supporting me, and thank you for supporting this community. It, it definitely makes it easier to keep doing this stuff, especially Orders. things being what they are. Aye, aye. Man, this this turret. We're, we're just going to have to wait for Erst, is what it is. We're going to have to wait for Erst, and then he's just going to have to charge in there. Because even our sensor people, uh, even our sensor people are not, like, they can't reach. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. Yeah, I mean, this this is what happens when you put a 280 engine in a fire starter. I don't even know what kind of turret this is. I mean, we could be running Erst to his death. But how far away do we need to be? Okay, there we go. What we can get visual from here. Innocence. Well, now I'm glad I didn't run you straight up to it because it's a shredder turret. Uh, I do intend to put a 300 engine in the Disco Inferno at some point, if we can find a 300 engine. So far, we have not found one. So now, with Erst having gotten the visual, we can hopefully, again, as we always say with Bolo, drop the rock on this turret. And hopefully this will do the job. No, it did not. That's okay, though. That is okay. We got Carrick. And if Carrick can't do it, then we might be waiting a little bit. So come on, Carrick. Hopefully, you're going to get the kill. There you go. Outstanding. That turret is gone. You love to see it. Mission Outstanding. Successful. Mostly a cakewalk of a mission, but the distance really made that one drag out a little longer than I thought. Uh, Mara, that is a good rule of thumb to use uh, cores that are multiples of the mech's tonnage under normal circumstances. Unfortunately, this is not the mercenary company to apply that kind of logic to. But yes, the traditional wisdom says use it in multiples. Uh, yeah, so hopefully, yeah, our man's devious was only injured a little bit. And... Uh, Karo's got kind of fucked up, but did manage to survive. He's going to be out for a couple of months, unfortunately. That's okay. We do have BA handholds on some of our mechs. So we'll still be able to get those battle armor into battle once they finally get repaired. Ah, uh, but let's see what kind of clan tech we've got. Oh, we got more ECM suites. You love to see it. We got some mech parts, which I certainly wouldn't turn my nose up at. I would love to start taking some of these heat sinks if we could get the damn heat sink kit. We've even got heavy lasers. Man, heavy lasers. Dude, heavy lasers. I know people don't like heavy lasers, but I like heavy lasers. So I think we have to take the clan ERPVC. We can't not take the clan ERPVC. Um... 
I kind of want to take another ECM suite. But there's so much other good stuff. So much good stuff. Like, we could take this and get two heavy medium lasers for one slot. That's a great deal. I don't know what the hell we put them in yet. But look at that shit. Look at that. 50 damage on a medium laser. That's insane. Oh, yeah, that does happen occasionally. Let me double check. If you guys are having a problem, be sure to call it out. Uh, but let me, let me double check my performance. Make sure I'm not cooking. Um, I am not. So it might be on Twitch's end. I mean, I think we do have a laser insulator. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to take it. If we can get two for a single slot, I'm going to take it. Um, so the real question now is... Do we go for an active probe? Do we go for an ECM suite? Twitch has been having a bad month lately. Like, it feels like Twitch is just... On the weekends, the connection is terrible. In the evenings, the connection is terrible. It's like, what the hell are they doing? So we could take some pulse lasers, but yeah, like, I think we take the ECM suite. And then come what may from the loot box. All right, what do we get? Got a cougar, got a kit fox. Don't care about an LMG. We did get some pulses. We got another Ultra AC5. I need to put that at the Jaeger mech, by the way. Um, and we got some LBX2 slugs, which I don't know that we're going to use that because we don't have any LBX2s, but not a bad haul, all told. Yeah, I've had that problem before as well. Uh, AFP, like, um, on other people's streams, where, for whatever reason, it, like, the video will just hang up, and sometimes you can still hear the audio, but the video freezes, and then you just, you can either pause and restart the video, um, or you can refresh. At least that works for me. But yeah, so we got some new toys. First thing I want to do is, now that I'm thinking about it, because we got another Ultra AC5 and I didn't put the other one in the Jaeger mech yet, I want to do that first. Uh, unfortunately, we were just... Like, I was still so shook up over, over losing General Quarters that uh, I wasn't thinking about that. But let's head to the mech bay, see what kind of damage we got. Uh, we know that the griffin had a little bit of damage to the head, but while we're here, I want to see about pulling out this large X-Pulse and replacing it with the clan ERPPC that we just got our hands on. Because it weighs a little bit less, but I think in terms of damage, we're going to do more, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to do 75 damage with this. And I think the heat is... Oh, yeah, the heat is way higher. Okay. So we'll definitely need to, uh... Yeah, I was gonna say, without the double heat sinks, I don't think we can do that. So I think we stick with the X-Pulse for right now. But soon, soon, if we can start finding some of those heat sink kits. Nah, it, so, Erst, when you look at it, like, the, the Clan ER PPC is 48 heat, and the large X-Pulse is only 27. So it's, it's almost double. Um, and just adding one or two heat sinks is not really going to help with that. So it's fine. We'll, we'll leave it off for right now. We do need to get our hands on some of the clan double heat sinks. And that's, we're only just now kind of dipping our toes into clan tech. So we're not quite there yet. And we gotta, I, I gotta resist the urge to go full Monty on this stuff. 
But we can potentially look at swapping out some of the missile systems. Maybe not, because we don't quite have any clan missile systems that we can use there just yet. Uh, that's okay, though. That is okay. We will get there eventually. We'll take it slow and steady. We'll go ahead and repair the Griffin. Get into the Jaeger mag. Yeah, well, if you haven't noticed, Erst, um, I have terrible luck just kind of in general. And so we don't normally find a lot of really good loot, even when we get full salvage on stuff. That's just one of the unfortunate perks of being me, is that any time a dice can roll against me, it, it usually does. Uh, but let's ditch the Ultra AC-5, and we will instead replace it with the Clan Ultra AC-5. And that will give us two additional tons to play with. So we could either add some more systems, we could up the armor. Uh, I don't know if we got a full cougar, but we can definitely look. Um, but let's see, if we max out the armor on the Jaeger, is that even worth it? Or do we put another weapon system in it? Because I think it's doing just fine right now with the AC and the gauze. We're using it as a sniper and it's doing a fine job in that capacity. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Hold the F on. Is we got the Beagle Probe, which we can ditch, and put the Active Probe in instead. And that gives us even more. Alright, alright. Can we then put an ECM suite in this puppy? We could next the armor. Hmm. What else do we have? What else do we have? Not much. No AMS. No decent support weapons. I mean, we could stick a couple of lasers in it, but I'm... Like, I don't think there's any point in putting a laser in a Jaeger mech. Because if they've gotten within laser range, then we have... We have fucked up. Um, 640... I mean, maybe a large laser? Because the large laser's running at 600 range. So if they're in range of the autocan, they... They'd probably be in range of a large laser as well. But that's going to be too much. The tonnage is too high. The Clannier mediums. Let's have a look at them. Clannier medium, what's the range? 420? Yeah, again, my only thinking there, and like I said before, like they may be a good weapon system, but if the enemy is in range of those weapon systems, then we have done something wrong with this Jaeger mech. Like, ideally, it's never going to be in range. Uh, so maybe if we pull out the Pharaoh? Yeah, I mean, we could do that. Maybe put a larger engine in it? Ah, uh, let's see, let's see... And we could put an ECM suite in it. Make it harder to hit with long-range firepower. I mean, I know typically you don't put an ECM in a sniper, but... Or we could put jump jets, yeah? Jump jets wouldn't be bad. I wouldn't mind dual gauze general quarters. We just don't have another gauze weapon system, I don't think. Or maybe we do. Let's see. What do we got? Oh, we got a light gauze. That's 12 tons. So the Ultra AC-5 is 45 damage at a maximum range of 640. But that's only if... No, that's 45 per shot. So the AC-5 is definitely going to be putting out more damage. Yeah, we could ditch the active probe. The reason that I put the probe in the Jaeger mech was because... Um, the person who's using the Jaeger mech has really good tactics. Hmm. 
If we pull the XL, yeah, it's going to be too heavy. God damn it. Put it back. I mean, we can max the armor for starters. That's the first thing. Because more armor is always better. And then equipment, we could... Oh, wow. We don't have any heavy jump jets. So, no jump jets for the Jaeger mech. Then what else could we possibly do? What can we do with a half a ton? Yeah, the reason that I keep the laser AMS on the Jaeger was because one, we had one, and two, because we're putting them, uh, because we're keeping the Jaeger mech towards the back line, it helps to have that laser AMS on, um, on some of our support. Precision strike computer. That would be nice if we had one, but we don't. We, we don't really have any kind of targeting computers or anything like that. Huh. I mean, I guess we could put another... I mean, we could put another bin at ammo, but we don't really need it. Like, we're not running out of ammo. I mean, I guess screw it. Put in a small pulse laser. I mean, I don't think we're ever going to need it. We're never going to use it, but... I, we could put a tag. What's the max range on the tag? Max range is only 480. So again, the tag is not going to be super useful for a Jaeger mech because we're not going to be that close to the enemy most of the time. I guess that's fair. It is still better than a pulse laser. Um, And then we only need to drop a tiny little bit of armor. So we'll just drop some off the rear torso, just a bit. And there we go. Alright, I'm gonna do the thing, because you guys keep telling me about it. I'm gonna do the thing, and I'm gonna shift-click on the armor. Look at me, chat. I am shift-clicking on the armor. Hi Rex, good to see you, glad you could stop by even if it was only for a minute. You've done some good work tonight, so rest assured that you are, you are in the zone. I'm not doing it to min-max, I'm just doing it to show I was paying attention. I heard you guys when you were telling me in the YouTube comments and all that stuff. I see you, I see you. Alright, um... Let's see, what else? What else? I think first things first. Can we do anything with the Dervish now that we actually have some clan missile racks? Because that would make me feel good. Yeah, I know, I did the thing. I did the thing, you guys. So here's what I'm thinking. We got a clan LRM-20 rack for five tons. We got a gyro 15 for three tons, but we got the ammo feed on it. So I know we just put this thing in here, but we dropped the feed, we dropped the gyro, we put the LRM 20 in it. We dropped the dumb fires. And we grab some just regular old LRM, or, or we could even go with Artemis. Let's do this for starters. So that's going to put us just a little bit overweight. That's okay. That is okay. Because, since this is a missile boat anyway... We drop a laser. Because we're only going to have six turns worth of ammo on that. And I don't like that. God bless America. 
I don't like that we're only going to have six turns worth of ammo with a single bend. Um, so... We throw in another bin of ammo. We drop the other laser and just make this thing pure missiles. And I think we do have one more Artemis that we can slap on here. And you're going to bitch because we don't have the right ammo. We slap the Artemis. We go to the ammo. We grab the last two bins of Artemis ammo that we have. And we only need to lose half a ton of armor in exchange for that. Which I will gladly give up to fire all the missiles. Uh, let's see. And drop just a little bit of center torso armor. A little bit more off the rear. And the legs? There we go. There we go. There we go. So this is a pure missile boat with rocket launchers, LRM-20s, clan version, and Inferno LR, or Iron, Inferno Rocket 20 for a single volley, but it clearly did the job. And it's only going to cost us 15 grand to do that. So I think it's well worth it. So we'll go ahead and validate that up. All right. I'll get it in the schedule. And... I don't think there's anything else that- well, I mean, I guess we could look at the Disco Inferno. I don't remember what all clan tech we've picked up in terms of the lasers, but... We could potentially swap out some of the small lasers, depending on what we have. Uh, we don't have any clan tech there, so never mind. Disco Inferno doesn't get any upgrades just yet. But yeah, there we go. Alright. So let's go ahead and fast forward. And all of our mechs are currently done. We'll go ahead and fast forward for that last one. So we got the hydroponics and we have an event. And uh, this guy looks vaguely reminiscent of Heath Ledger. Is it just me or does this guy kind of look like a young Heath Ledger? I'm just curious. No, just me? Anyway. Friend of a friend. In the command center, one of Darius's old friends from the MRB contacts you directly via Holovid. I have a peculiar request, Commander. I have a friend who wants you to train a fresh recruit, Samuel Dannon. No academy training, but he's sharp. Goes by the call sign Squire in the hiring hall. Really, a friend of a friend wants us to take on a fresh recruit. Sounds fishy. The MRB contact continues. I can't say much more, but my friend has a soft spot for underdogs. They want to see how much of a mech war how much a mech warrior can learn hands on. And you've done a lot with little, Commander. Not to mention I'd be grateful. The Halibut blinks out. Is that how people do like in the future? They're just like, hey, I need you to take care of this kid. Uh we can't afford a babysitter. Bye, and then just hang up. I mean, you say he's a shitty pilot, but we can always use more vehicle pilots. <laughs> so listen, I love giving people a chance. But again, the manager in me absolutely hates nepotism. I fucking hate nepotism with a passion. And this is exactly what it sounds like to me. This is the, I have a friend of a friend who has a kid who wants to be big and important, but he doesn't have any of the skills. Give him a job anyway. And this absolutely sounds like that to me. So we're going to do a background check at least. Later that night, when you return to your quarters, you receive an HPG message titled, Word from a Friend. 
I noticed you were looking into Squire's background, Commander. Justin Allard appears on your screen. I don't know who the fuck that is. Who is that? Uh, okay, sure. Your diligence should be applauded. I won't lie. The boy is green, but he's a fighter. You know, I barely got through my training at the Sakara Academy. My instructors doubted me. My classmates insulted me over my Capellan heritage. They gunned for me during every drill. I didn't learn a thing, just did my best to survive. But one day, General Sheridan Courtney inspected our class. No simulations. He put us in our mechs and kept us in them until we wrung all the sweat and puke from our bodies. I was the only student who earned top marks. Years later, when the Liao forces surrounded the General's battalion on Spica, Spica, no one fought harder than me to save them. Check the hiring hall for Squire. I trust you'll make the right decision. Again. 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 Absolutely reeks of nepotism. Absolutely reeks of nepotism. And I hate it. I mean, we're clearly going to hire the guy... But it's, it's that, you know, he's the, the kid of a famous person. We should totally hire him. But, like, uh, I hate it. Where, where, where is this goofball? Squire. Up, Commander? That looks nothing like the picture. I was expecting Heath Ledger. I got... Fucking wish version of Dave Attell? I, like, I don't... I mean, his stats are doo-doo. And it doesn't look like he has any kind of special traits or anything like that. Not to mention, this, this is going against the rule that I set out for us at the very beginning where I said we weren't going to take special pilots. Uh, I made an exception for the cats people because that was really cute and I thought it was well done. So I made an exception there but we're not hiring special pilots. Also, why is this person purple? Why does this person have a custom portrait? Right? Like, this is a custom portrait. It doesn't matter. It's not important. All right, command center. We put all the mechs back together. No, 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 I'm telling you, Earth, this person is custom. Look at this. Uh, I like, and you may not be able to see it on the stream, but like, look at the, this is not the pre-gen, like this is airbrushed. This is like done in gr a graphics program. This is not the 3D model. Like this is, this is not the 3D model. Like, these are the 3D models. You can clearly tell because they've all got that same, like, potato face. But, like, I can see it very close up, and this this is very clearly like a Photoshop. It, it's a random pilot, but I'm saying the photo, like, the actual picture, is not made in the 3D engine. No, 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 I know you can change the lighting, but this is not the 3D model, though, is what I'm saying. Am I going to have to... I'm going to hire this pilot and I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to hire a pilot to prove a point. Receiving you. See? It's a custom portrait. You can change it. It doesn't change anything. This is not a 3D model. Oh, yeah. Do not recite the dark magics to me, witch. No, no, I get that. I understand that. I understand that it is like a base game thing. What I am saying is that the portrait is actually a portrait. It is not a 3D model. That's what I was getting at. You are correct, Astso. Neener, neener, boo-boo. Suck it, nerd. And you're fired. Get out of here.